Hey, Christian, so Sweet Francaise is a fascinating, moving story uh, that has equally affecting origins, I think. Um, I wanted to start by asking if you had any prior no knowledge of Irin Nemirovsky's novel before you got asked to be in this film. Oh, yes, I read it when it was published in 2004, I think. Um, it was intriguing even, you know, because there was, there was a, because the story of the publication was so fascinating. Irene Nemirovsky was um, taken um, by the Nazis from her home um, and taken to Auschwitz where she died in 1942. Um, and her little girl, she was separated from her daughters and, the little girl, and she left a suitcase with these children. And in that suitcase they found, 40 years later, this manuscript which is an unfinished novel. Um, I think it was supposed to be written in three parts and she'd written two of them. Um, and it um, told the story of the exodus of Paris and the arrival of the um, invading Nazis. And then life under the occupation in a small town in the provinces, um, which is what she'd experienced. And her observation of people's behavior and her um, the detail and the the humanity that she had, that she um, expresses in her writing, is is really really worth the read. And at reading it, I felt this would make the most fantastic film. And she was sort of waiting for somebody to come up with the offer, <laughs> and then eventually they do. And of course, you offered the part of uh, Madame Angeli, who's very different in the novel from the. So it was a bit of a why are they giving that? You know, <laughs> I don't want that. Um, and then I, you know, read the screenplay, and it was um, something that I felt I wanted to do. Yeah, well, in the screenplay, she's presented as a sort of bastion of this very hierarchical and traditional French society. Um, so I was wondering if you could start by telling us a little bit about where she is in her life at the beginning of the film. Well, Madame Angelier is a landowner, and she has great status in this small town. Um, and um, she's a widow, and she has a son. And her son has disappeared. Her son is off fighting the war, she assumes. She has had no news from him. And she's living in the house which belonged to her father, with her daughter-in-law um, and there is a the, the local sort of a, a German officer from the from who is billeted in her house so she's a woman who has the wrong young man in her house her son has vanished she doesn't know where he is and she's got this young man same age living in her home looking at her daughter-in-law and she's in agony. Um, and just the thought of not knowing your son's whereabouts, not knowing whether he's dead or alive, as a, as a woman, as a mother, is unbearable. So I thought that was an interesting way to look at why somebody becomes so tough, so, so desperate to hang on to um, the, this idea of status, this idea of privilege, this idea of you know, being who she is. Um, and you mentioned her daughter-in-law, Lucille, of course, who's played by Michelle, Michelle Williams. Williams. Um, I like the description that Saul Dibb gave about her character of Lucille, which was a mouse that roars eventually, and I thought Michelle conveyed that very well. Tell me a little bit about working with Michelle and what she's like as an actress. Um, well, Michelle is an actress who I admire enormously um, for quite a long time now, and um, she's, she's quite different from um, us English actors who tend to just sort of turn up and say the words <laughs> but so there's a lot of um, a lot of reflection and a lot of um, discussion and I mean I don't I don't really work like that but but I, I, I loved working with her it was great fun and it was great seeing that um, it was great working with M Matthias as well who's who comes from a much more theatrical background and um, he, he put such energy into everything um, it was great work I love working with the young people uh, of course, you live in France and speak the language fluently. <clears throat> Knowing the country as you do, did you feel better placed to sort of understand this uh, traditional hierarchical system? Yeah, in a, in a way, yes, you're right. In a way, I did, um, especially as I've been there for such a long time. And I remember as a very young girl going to France and being faced with not a similar situation, but the, this world of which seemed to have preserved in mothballs of... of impeccable women who never smile, who go to church every five minutes, who wear a lot of navy blue, um, who, uh, you know, who, are, who, who, who just seem so tough. And you can't really figure out why they're so mean. And then you, that's, what I, that's what I'm interested in. 
I thought it was very interesting that the film presents World War II in France from a female perspective as well. Um, I wondered if that was something that appealed to you about Sweet Francais says. I didn't really, I mean, I just read it as a story and then everyone's talking about it. It's a woman's point of view, it's a woman's point of view. Oh, yes, so it is. But um, I didn't really notice that bit. But then you're right, it's true. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and finally, congratulations on becoming a dame at the beginning Thank of you. the year. Um, I wondered if you've attended the ceremony yet. And, no, uh, it's, it's very soon. If so, when you do go to meet the Queen, I hope, uh, whether that will sort of play into your hands, bearing in mind your role in the audience coming up. Soon. Well, um, I don't think I can... I dare ask her for any tips. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's all very exciting and a bit scary. Well, at least you've met the uh, the woman in question yeah, by then, I know, anyway. So. I know. I hope she doesn't chop my head off. <laughs> Kristen Sutcombe, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is that yeah. from The Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!